So as y'all know, it's Black History Month and I have something super important that I wanna say. While people have been busy telling us that our English is broken, ghetto, and poorly spoken, we've continued creating. Creating new words that spread around the world and get added to dictionaries, while we still get refused jobs if our English is too ghetto. Even ABC News uses Ebonics to talk about politics. Mm-hmm. Creating new trends that are good enough for pop culture, but too ghetto for everyday black people. And creating a bunch of amazing products that change the world, but don't change people's perception about black people. So in this video, I want to celebrate black history, black culture, and black language by telling you about five things you didn't know were created by black people. So before we get started, please go ahead and give this video un me gusta y suscríbete so that you stay up to date on all of my future lessons for general Spanish, Dominican Spanish, and Ebonics in Spanish. On October 2nd, 1977, the first high five ever was used to celebrate a baseball milestone. Glenn Burke did that. He was an African-American baseball player whose controversial sexuality essentially ended his career, but his legacy lives on through this gesture that's used across all sports and in everyday life to celebrate successes and victories. The high five may be out of style now with COVID going on, but just like the bills on the first of the month, it'll be back. So every time you see someone slapping skin, think of it as a mini celebration of blackness. In 1981, Philip Downing created a street letterbox where you could drop your mail into that box that needed to be sent out rather than going all the way up to the post office. Instead, they could just drop their letters into these safe metal boxes on the street that were both theft and weatherproof. So people who supposedly can't communicate well helped improve everybody's communication. And that's more than word on the street. That's facts. Charles Drew was an African-American physician from the early 1900s who developed a way to process and store blood plasma in blood banks. So in other words, he created the blood bank. Dr. Drew was then appointed as the director of the first American Red Cross blood bank, but he eventually resigned over his correct anger that black blood was not accepted. After his resignation, blood from African Americans was accepted, but it was segregated until 1950. Now you might be getting blood from someone black, Asian, Middle Eastern, something to keep white supremacists up at night. Dr. Patricia E. Bath changed the game for cataract surgery with a new device and technique called laser phaco. I bet no one back then saw that coming, especially since people are still blind to black contributions. Dr. Bath continued flexing on him by becoming the first woman member of the Jules Stein Eye Institute, the first woman to lead a post-grad training program in ophthalmology, the first woman elected to the honorary staff of the UCLA Medical Center, the first African-American to be an ophthalmology resident at NYU, the first African-American female surgeon at UCLA Medical Center, and the first African-American female doctor to receive a medical patent. Mm-hmm. In 1706, an African slave named Onesimus helped save the United States from smallpox. He told his Puritan church minister, Cotton Mather, about this centuries-old tradition practiced in Africa where you draw fluid from an infected person and then scratch the skin of somebody who's not infected. This introduces smallpox or whatever else to that healthy person so that they become immune. This practice was, of course, opposed politically, religiously, and medically, even though only 2% of people died compared to the 15% that died if they didn't get the inoculation and ended up getting smallpox. But this practice ended up being used to inoculate American soldiers during the Revolutionary War. So to sum that up, the United States has benefited hand over fist by bringing Africans into the United States, even though that trip killed 70% of them. This country has benefited not just from the hands of the slaves that built it, but from often unrecognized and uncelebrated black intelligence that has improved and saved lives. As African Americans, I hope that you feel fortunate today because we came from a mere 388,000 people out of the 12.5 million that were forced to make that journey. 
Our ancestors are the strong-bodied, strong-willed Africans that survived that journey, survived slavery, and then created all of us. The things I mentioned in this video are just a fraction of the things that black people have invented, and I encourage you to keep researching and keep celebrating black history this month and every other month. Gracias por estar aquí. Hasta la próxima.